Hey guys, so first day, Joe and I land in Cartagena, and uh, I didn't, as, as soon as we get to the hostel, we're like, dude, we gotta go outside and check out this city, figure out what's going on around us. We're starving. Uh, I get some empanadas that I thought were the best empanadas of my life, and then I just realized they were mediocre empanadas for this country. <laughs> and it was, a, it was a bit of a shit show. Because uh, <laughs> they're really, we, we were the only dude. It, it's December uh, 30th. Joe and I, uh, the, the only gringos in town. Of course, we... Uh, when when people stop being nice to us, we we December thirtieth, twenty twenty. So it was uh, so during COVID, so that we were the only to- gringo tourists. It was there were a lot of local Colombians from like Medellin and Bogota who were there visiting. But uh, whenever someone was friendly to us, we didn't realize they were trying to sell us something. We just thought folks were being friendly, and we had a guy come up to us and right away whoa where are you from and we go oh boston boston oh boston oh boston uh you want some cocaina and i was like <laughs> it's like nah dude i'm gonna have to pass on the cocaina and he's like come on free sample and i was like what because he goes you come in the bar in back i, I give you free sample and i was like i don't want to go into this bar i don't know it could be a group of guys in there so we do our own thing we walk away and we come back guy finds us again on the street Oh, Boston, cocaina, free sample. And I was like, ah, oh, shit, man. Because when I was younger, like 10 years ago, I went to Amsterdam and I remember walking through the red light district and this African guy sees me and he's eating froyo. He's eating frozen yogurt and he just goes, hey, what's up? And I go, hey. And he's like, you want some cocaine? And I go, up. I was like, maybe. I was like, I, was like, I, I do, but I, I was nervous. I didn't know, I don't know if I was going to get in trouble. And he goes, you want to and I'm very hesitant and I'm walking away and he goes do you want a free sample and I go um he's like he, he just he's getting really mad at me and he just stops mouthful of froyo he goes it's Amsterdam like 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 he was so he couldn't get over that this tourist was afraid to do coke in the middle of the street in Amsterdam and I go ah, and I just walked away and the guy was just like mm, just angrily eating his, he was so mad I didn't do his free sample of cocaine and so I promised myself, if ever that happened again, I didn't think it would, that I would take that free sample. And of course, here I am in the middle of the street, and the guy's like, "Want some cocaine? Free sample?" And I go, "Ah, okay." And he's like, "Okay, right here." And his friend comes up, and they pull some out, big, big chunk of the stuff, and start crunching it up on a piece. He's looking for something. They pull out a piece of cardboard, and they rip a piece of cardboard, and guy i don't know i didn't have i wasn't filming now dude i was kind of nervous just before i i caught up my gumption to stop filming he he hands the piece of cardboard to his friend they put it on they crunch it and he goes okay and they give me something i think it was a dollar bill or something i go and i, <laughs> I bust one out and, and he goes okay uh you free sample now you pay me and i go whoa whoa what do you what do you mean dude this is free sample we, we we went over this this is a free sample i did my free sample you know it's like you go to the food court general gals free sample free sample and you know i eh, no thanks not, i have my free sample i'm good and he goes you did the free sample now you pay me and i go no that's not a it's not a fucking free sample works he goes no no now you pay me free sample i go dude free sample free sample free sample you said free sample and now i i, I get free he goes, see, free sample, but now you pay me. And then he opens up my sock and shoves a sack of Coke in there. And I was like, all right, I'm not. Nope. And I, I and we have like this little fight where I'm taking it out of my sock and I'm putting it back. He's like, you take a free sample, free sample, now you pay me. Shove. He's just open up my sock, free sample. It's just shoving it in. I'm like, no, dude, I have my free sample, no mas. No mas cocaína. I was like, I do soy, mostly sobrio. I'm not doing it. I'm mostly soba. I don't. Yeah, this was just because I'm in Colombia, okay? I had to fulfill this thing I didn't do 10 years ago in Amsterdam. Let it go. <laughs> Finally, like, I'm like, I start causing a scene. And he's like, F- oh. he goes, okay, I, I, I would got tell you, going to be problems. And I go, sure. Guy was no, he wasn't. He was just trying to scare me. Anyway, I got my free sample, my free sample, and you know, it was. I was like, this is gonna be an interesting trip. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we had a great time in Cartagena. It was was right. This was obviously they have Christmas decorations, New Year decorations. I don't, 
I did my nighttime filming with a GoPro 7 with a case still on. I didn't know a lot of stuff. I don't know the tech stuff. Clearly, you guys are looking at this and hearing me talk. I'm not a tech whiz. And I, I made some massive filming mistakes anyway. <laughs> That's beside the point. Um, uh, here we are. The first day we woke up and, uh, you know, we had some friends in our hostel. And we'll take it from there. And then here's us first day out in the streets. Uh, anyway, <laughs> enjoy. First official official day in Cartagena, and uh, Joey and I woke up to some new friends to welcome us into the city. Hey, buddy, how you doing there? Oh, on the plus side, I think he's dead. Oh, he's still alive? Look at the size of his fucking antenna. I really hope you don't get in my bags, dude. Oh, he's alive. And I woke up. I woke up with someone in my bed. One of my, one of the other hostel goers was in between my legs. Yeah. What's up? Oh, you got some titties. I didn't notice that before. Excuse. I don't mean to ogle you, but clearly that's a, that's that's a cat that's been a mom before, right? I'm, no, I'm just saying. No, no, I don't. No disrespect. You still got your figure, baby. You know, I appreciate a woman who's uh, full-figured and takes on monthly duties. But you don't see that back home. Because most, most of us... <laughs> All right, I'm... I'm <laughs> it's, look, I'm not calling you a whore. That's not what I'm saying. All right, I'm sure that you were in a stable relationship with the man when you decided to have his kittens. So Joey and I, in our desperation for food, stopped in this really hip mall. And... This dude walked in, right? And the two guys working there. Uh, two gay men, two gay gentlemen. And uh, the guy walks in with a with like a nice bono, right? Like like a like at least a semi for the pure minimum. And he's not hiding it. And he's wearing short shots. And he walks up to the counter and he rests it on the fucking counter. And I said, Wow, this dude was just leaving it all out, right? Just going for it, man. And then he hiked up his short shots even more. And I was like, oh, he's hitting on. And he started talking to the dude at the counter, asking him questions, flirting with him. He was an American dude. And I go, dude, that's a, I gotta give him credit, man, for shooting his shot. That's the ballsiest fucking thing I have ever seen. I have, in all my years, never thought when I wanna hit on a girl in customer service or the service industry, I never thought, hey man, I'm just walk up, slap my dick right on the counter and be like, what is it, baby? And he did it, man. And I was like, at first, I was like, this is audacious. Because he's walking around with his with his hot pecker in the in the coffee shop. But I was like, dude, Colombians are just, uh, they're more free with their bodies, dude. I keep, because because obviously it's hot. So ladies here, are, I don't know, man. They're, they wear more because they, they need to. And therefore, they're more confident in touch themselves. In America... Either have like New England Catholic women I grew up with who were taught their body is shame and it's original sin to show even a little bit of it, or you have girls who twerk in the corner. There's not much of an in between. What you got here, Joe? We doing the wall? Yeah, I'm gonna uh, go This is uh I wasn't videotaping for the first day and a half because uh, we were in a real shady area and Cartagena is beautiful and it's nice. But what I've realized is that uh, there's some real fucking there's some real fucking hood areas, man. And because of the virus, the cruise ships aren't coming here. And the dudes who hustle, and I respect the hustle, man. But these dudes that are hustling are not getting the money that they no no dinero that they normally get. So the coke dudes, the hat dudes, the bracelet dudes, the hustlers, the beggars, everyone, uh, they're coming out in force and. Uh, we tried to get food and we couldn't do it. You, I would not recommend if you look this gringo, because Joey and me are standing out. We look like a, a lettuce tomato gringo sandwich with extra mayo. There is no, my friend told me, he said, Mike, don't wear pants. Don't wear shots when you're out down here. Wear pants, right? Because cause the, like, he's, the tourists wear shots. And I go, dude, I'm a fucking ginger. I am the only ginger in this city. Are you good to go? And I'm legit, I'm the only fucking ginger, dude. Only one. Oh, 
let me check this out. I want to read this. Strongholds part of the walls, story of Santa Catarina. Strongholds, mention of colonial type, angular plant made of masonry, walls, portholes. I always like that word, portholes. <laughs> That's a funny one. It sounds dirty. Porthole. You fucking porthole. I need to call I gotta start calling my friends fucking portholes. You fucking portholes in Casamate flanking of Cabrera Lake, drafted by Batista and Tonelli in 19, 1595, motherfucker. Built by Cristobal de Rota. Modified it by increasing its proportions in 1639. It was finished by Francisco de Morga. Who added the pincer in 1645. And uh, back to what I was saying, my friend said, "Wear pants, they're gonna know you're a fucking gringo." And like, what I've noticed is they don't like. There's a lot of like people who would you would consider white. You know, they look like they'd be Europeans or Americans or Canadians, and but they're locals and they speak Spanish. And the hawkers here and the hustlers don't bother them, or the locals just completely ignore them. And it, it seems like as people will come up. And they're gonna try and be friendly to you, man. They're gonna try and be friendly, and you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta tell them off. Or flat out ignore them, and it sucks, but you gotta fucking do it. And if you don't, they will not leave you alone. They do not take no for an answer. And uh, like in these areas, man, uh, we already, we got into a little fucking incident already on my, literally an hour since I got here. And, oh fuck, oh, I gotta turn this camera around. I'll talk about this shit later. This is, it's beautiful.